Well, good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Harvest Ministries. Hope you've had a good week and a blessed day so far. We're excited to have you with us here in person. Those who are joining us online this morning, welcome to our service. And if you are here for the very first time, hopefully you got a little card that looks like this. And if you would fill that card out for us and drop it in the box on the wall on the way out, we would appreciate that. And if anything has changed, your regular tender, uh, if you could update one of those cards and drop it in that box as well, we would certainly appreciate you doing that for us this morning as well. Uh, just want to make some announcements quickly. Uh, next Sunday morning, uh, there will not be any adult Bible study. So if you typically come for that, uh, just put that on your calendar. No adult Bible study next Sunday morning. Uh, we'll be getting ready for our fall festival. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that later on as well. But uh, there's going to be a lot of activity going on. They thought best not to have that Bible study. Some of them will be working and getting things ready for us as well. Uh, next Sunday morning. Uh, Harvest Youth, we always ask you to pray for our Harvest Youth and Pastor Robin and everything she has going on. Uh, some of our young people are at a uh, youth retreat this weekend. Uh, Pastor Robbie is there. He's been the evangelist. He's been preaching Friday night, Saturday night. Uh, Sunday morning he'll be preaching today uh, up there as well. And he texted us today and said, I can't wait to get home and tell you about the service last night. And so God did some miraculous things uh, in the lives of our young people there. So please pray for them as they have their service and as they make their way back home this morning, uh, that they'll have a safe trip. Our nursery is available if you need those facilities out these doors to my left and your right. Uh, they'll take care of your babies, love on them, pray for them, change their diapers, uh, give them goldfish or whatever they have in there to give them. Uh, but they'll take good care of your babies for you if you need those facilities, please uh, take advantage of that. And we always ask you to pray for our kids' church, Pastor Ron and Pastor Alma, and all their workers who are helping them today minister to our kids uh, on their level. And uh, please pray for them uh, this morning. I also want to say thank you uh, on behalf of myself and our staff for all of the outpouring of love you've shown to us for Pastor Appreciation and uh, uh, gift cards, uh, prayers, hugs, food, uh, all kinds of things you've done for us. And we, we don't feel worthy of it, but we love you and we appreciate everything you've done for us and all the love and appreciation you show to us, uh, not just once a year, but uh, many times throughout the year, you show us how much you love us and appreciate us. I then want to mention our Christmas choir practice. If you're interested in that or already a part of it, it will be here today at four o'clock. Uh, on the stage, right? I think I read that email right. She'll be sitting on the stage today practicing. Uh, so come out expecting a great time. If you haven't been here, it's not too late, right? So if you like to sing, come on out at 4 o'clock today in here in the sanctuary. and They'll get you connected. You can begin learning those songs as well. In your bulletin, there is a handout uh, that looks like this, uh, a meals ministry. Uh, there are times in our congregation when someone... Uh, need some food assistance. Uh, maybe they've gone into the hospital. Uh, maybe they've lost a loved one. Maybe they're dealing with a sickness or any of those situations may happen. And uh, we are trying to get folks who will sign up and say, I can make a meal. I can make two meals, uh, whatever the case may be. So if you would be interested in uh, helping with this, when this need arises in our congregation, if you could fill that little slip out on the bottom, this tear it off. Drop it in the offering box on the way out today, and we'll get that information to the people in charge, and they'll be in touch with you. You don't have to cook every week, just every now and then. Uh, prepare something, and uh, you'll be a blessing to those who need that type of help as well. Uh, Wednesday night is our, our Wednesday night ministries, the adult Bible study. I'm teaching many gifts, uh, one spirit. Uh, this week we'll be talking about the gift of tongues and the interpretation of tongues. So we're going to be combining those two gifts this week. Uh, the teens are learning about the Ten Commandments. And in the kids' ministries, they have a Christmas choir, our Christmas program practice, and other activities that they're doing as well. Also, on Wednesday night, if you can stay after uh, for a little bit, uh, we're going to be working on some of the uh, snacks for the fall festival. We thought this would be good use of our time uh, on Wednesday night. So if you can hang out for a little bit, we make this thing we call Poor Man's Payday. And, um, you know, if you've ever had that, it's just candy, corn, and peanuts. We call it poor man's payday. It's not anything poor about it. It's not cheap to make. But we call it poor man's payday anyway. Uh, but uh, if you could help us out with that, we would appreciate you sticking around on Wednesday night, if you could, for a little bit. Speaking of Fall Festival, next Sunday 
is our fall festival. It is a great big day around here. Uh, we will celebrate uh, not only the fall festival, the season, and getting together as a church fan, but also our church anniversary as well. So that'll begin next Sunday morning, just like normal, except the adult Bible study, 1030 here in the sanctuary. Uh, we're excited that Bishop Joshua Lynn is going to be our guest speaker and all kinds of things uh, we have planned on that slide. You see hay rides and uh, train or bucket pull. I don't know what you even call that thing. Uh, the kids set in the barrel pull, uh, bouncy houses, uh, axe throwing, food, and all the things we normally have going on as well. We have added a chili cook-off this year. Uh, again, so if you make the best chili in this church, then you're welcome to prove that to everybody. And so there is a sign-up sheet for that on the back table. Uh, I just looked before I church started. I may be the only one. I don't know if anybody else signed up yet or not. So I don't want to just cook off against myself. So somebody else got to cook off against me. So please go back and sign up. We always have a great time with this. And um, we'll see who has the best chili this year. And what we ask you to bring is a dessert. It can be a homemade dessert. It can be a store-bought dessert. doesn't matter as long as you bring enough to share and at least one two-liter drink. You can bring more than that if you'd like to, but at least one, uh, but more than that for your family. So please bring, if you have a special dessert you like or something you have really good at making, then bring that and be a part of it. But we do need your help. We have a lot of setup to do, and, uh, and it takes time, and it takes people. Uh, and so on Saturday, this coming Saturday, from 8 until 10, uh, we're going to feed you at 7.30 if you want to come and eat breakfast at 7.30. But uh, probably the biggest thing we have to do is set up this giant tent out here on the back parking lot. Uh, and many of you came last year and helped us do that. It took about 10 or 12 or 15 guys to get that tent up. But we don't have that many signed up yet. We only have about seven or eight signed up. Yes. And women can help as well. We don't want to, you know, everybody's welcome to participate. Uh, so if you want to come and help us put up a giant tent, uh, Mitch Tyler's in charge of that. He'll be here directing traffic and telling us what to do. But we do need your assistance next Saturday uh, to make this happen. So we're going to set up a tent, set up a pumpkin patch. We're going to make some food and put tables and chairs around. Lots of things will be going on. And uh, so let's just not leave it to a few to do. Let's all pitch in and make it go smooth and fast and help out. And so if you could give us a little bit of your time next Saturday morning, an hour, two hours, you can stay the whole time. That would be fantastic. But please come and help us set up and get things ready for uh, next Sunday. It's going to be a great day and a great time. And the weather looks good already on the, on the weather app. It looks good. No rain, a beautiful day just like today. So it's going to be a great day for Fall Festival. On the 30th is our trunk or treat. Many of you already signed up for that, but there's a handout in your bulletin, I believe, again. Just cut that off. Yes, I'd like to participate and decorate your automobile, and you will be having that on the 30th of this month uh, from 5 to 7. I think the decorators get here at 3 or 4 o'clock that afternoon, 4 o'clock, to start decorating. So we're going to have a great time, and uh, Katie Bryant's heading this up for us. So if you'd like to be a part of that, just fill that sheet out, and we'll get you on the list that you're going to be here and help us with that. Also on November 6th, uh, Pastor Austin and Lindsay are putting together a, a regional or a night of worship. So we're inviting all of our sister churches in the Roanoke Valley area uh, to come and be a part of this night. So uh, put on your calendar November the 6th, 6 o'clock, to be back here on that Sunday night. It's going to be a great time of worship and music and praise. And I think there are in, different people are going to be singing and playing perhaps, hopefully. Hopefully they're praying about that. But uh, it's going to be a great night, so we want you to come and be a part of that if at all possible. And the last thing I want to mention as far as announcements go is our girls' day out. They're going to Hobby Lobby in Mardell on November the 7th in Lynchburg. And if you'd like to go, you can sign up and be a part of that trip as well. And we are so glad you're here this morning. I know there are other places you could be and other things you could be doing today. But thank you for taking time out of your weekend to come and be with us. We believe God has a word for us. We believe we still serve a God who answers prayer, who still moves mountains. Uh, uh, Sister Roberta, she's here somewhere. Roberta, are you can I, in here where I can see you? There she is, all the way over here. Some of you know her. She's been relatively new to the harvest, and she moved down from northern Virginia, moved back to God's country here in Roanoke. And uh, she's been looking for a house for months and months and months. Many of us have prayed for that. And she just told me this morning she got the house. She got the house. And so we rejoice with her today. God gave her the right house at the right time. 
I got reports this weekend, people telling me that God has answered prayers or tests came back. It was negative, but God is doing miracles and God is providing finances that was already there. He doesn't realize it was there. So God is on the move, amen? We just have to have faith and believe in him. So I'm going to ask you to stand this morning with us if you're able to. And we just want to invite the Lord's presence to do what he wants to do. We're not going to ask him to be here. He's already here with us. We talked about that last Sunday morning. He's already here. And we're just going to thank him for being here. Thank him for what he's going to do. Thank him for what he's already done in your life. And thank him that we can come together and worship him today to receive what we have need of in our lives. However you want to pray, silently, out loud, doesn't matter. However you're comfortable, let's talk to the Lord this morning. Father, we love you today. Thank you now, Lord, for being here in this service with us today. You were here before we even got here today. There is no place that your presence is not. You're here on this platform. You're there in our seats with us. You're here on this campus. Your presence is here and it is real. And I thank you today for answered prayers. I thank you for testimonies of healing and deliverance. I thank you for testimonies of financial provision and, and blessing. I thank you, Lord, for our sister who received that house just at the right moment. We give you praise and glory and honor. And I thank you this morning, Lord, for what you're going to do in this service. Holy Spirit, have your way. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. Anoint us and use us and, and move among us today. Heal bodies and minds and spirits. Help those who are heartbroken today. Help those who are dealing with addictions and habits, whatever it may be. Break those bondages today, I pray. And let us worship you in freedom and in truth throughout this service, we pray. In Jesus' name. And the church says amen. Amen. Let's worship together this morning.
welcome you here this morning.
part says, you said it, I believe it, you said it, it is done.
you are so great. You breathe life into us, God, and I pray that we are your vessels in everything that we say and do, God, for your glory, Father. All the earth will shout your praise someday. Our hearts will cry. And these bones are singing your praise, God. We worship you, Father. You are so worthy. Thank you, Father, for meeting us here today, God. We worship you. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and the harp. Praise him with the tambourine and the dance. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him of loud, clanging cymbals. Then the writer says this, that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you have breath this morning? Can you give him some praise right where you're at today? It doesn't matter what it sounds like, what it looks like. We all praise differently. We all give thanks differently. But let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you this morning, but that song spoke to me. These old bones will sing. <laughs> These old bones will sing. I'll wake up some days and I am complaining about my old bones. And they do a lot of things, but they don't sing most days. They creak and pop and hurt. But I love the way that song challenges me to change my mindset and change my thinking. These bones will sing praise. They will worship God. They will exalt him. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If we don't praise him, the nature will praise him. The rocks will cry out. The trees will cry out. The grass will cry out. That's all scriptural and biblical. It's all will cry out in our place if we don't praise him. Listen, we got something to praise God about if we are born again and he has forgiven us of our sins and we're on our way to heaven. We have something to give God praise for this morning. In fact, you have something so great when you be, receive salvation that the Bible says even the angels can't worship and praise like you are able to worship and praise God. They've never been saved. They've never been set free. They've never been delivered from bondage and drug addiction and alcoholism. They've never experienced any of that. You can praise greater than an angel can praise this morning, but you got to set your mind to do it. I'm going to praise you, Lord, no matter what. I'm going to praise you through this storm, praise you through this sickness, praise you through this financial problem, praise you through this relationship issue. God, I'm going to praise you no matter what. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. I hope you're ready to praise this week as we jump into the Word of God together. We've been in this series now for, uh, I think, six or seven weeks, and we've been talking about the Trinity, and we, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, been looking at these as part of the Trinity, and we wanted to do this 
uh, because we think it's an important study for us as believers to try to gain a better understanding of what the Trinity is and how it impacts our lives. And you'll see an image on the screen that we've been using throughout uh, this series just kind of explains the Trinity, uh, what it is, what it is not. But we know that God is the Father, God is the Son, and God is the Holy Spirit, uh, one in three, three in one. And so we want to try to help all of this make sense as we talk about God the Father, God the Son, and today beginning to talk about God the Holy Spirit. I want to show you five images on the screen this morning, uh, just consecutively as we look at the screen. And I want you to think about what do all of these images have in common as we look at them. First, we have a dove. And then we have an image of fire. And then we have a picture of uh, wind. We don't really see wind, but we see the effects of wind and what wind does. So you're seeing the effect of wind on those trees. We have water. And finally, we have a cloud. What do all of these images have in common? Well, these are all images found in the Bible that physically represent the Holy Spirit. They are a physical representation of God's unseen presence in the world. Just think about a few of those for a moment with me. The dove descended at Jesus' baptism. When John baptized Jesus in the Jordan, the Father is descended like a dove, which was a representation of the Holy Spirit upon his life. On the day of Pentecost, the wind blew through the upper room on the day of Pentecost, representing the coming of the Holy Spirit on earth. The cloud in the Old Testament filled the temple with God's presence, representing that the Spirit of God, the, the presence of God was there in the temple. And so I want to challenge you this morning on some level that whenever you see any of these things in your life going forward, that you will be reminded that the Holy Spirit is present with you now, and he is working in the world around us at all times. You may not physically see him, physically experience it, but he is always around you, always working in the world around us. And so today we're going to begin talking about what many consider the most mysterious person of the Trinity, and that is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God, and the Holy Spirit has existed from the very beginning of time. In fact, the Holy Spirit was with God in the creation of the world, according to Genesis 1 and 2. In fact, in your Bibles in Genesis 1 and 2, you may want to circle that or write that down. That is the very first time we see the Holy Spirit in Scripture, Genesis 1 and 2. When Jesus ascended back to heaven after his resurrection, he sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, to help us, and to direct our lives. In fact, our first verse today says this, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit. Now, the, the Greek word there for spirit is pneuma. And it's where we get our English word, pneumonia. Now, where does pneumonia set in on us at? Sets in on our lungs, right? Sets in where we breathe. I love that last song because I knew what I was going to talk about today. It's his breath in our life. It is his pneuma, his spirit that is inside of us. It is the very breath of God that lives inside of us. It means breath or wind or spirit. And in other words, God, the Holy Spirit, is the life-giving breath of God. He is the pneuma who lives inside of us that gives us life. God is breathing inside of us. What a powerful thought and a powerful concept. But Jesus said he is the Holy Spirit. He is the pneuma who leads into all truth. Then he says this, the world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be 
in you. What is Jesus saying there? The Holy Spirit has always been around you. The Holy Spirit has always been in this world. His presence has always been here. He has always been around you. But what does he tell his disciples? You're going to go to an upper room and pray, and then the Holy Spirit is not just going to live around you. He's going to live inside of you. It's going to be a shift taking place. The presence was, was around you, but now it's inside of you. He was around you, but now he is the pneuma who is living inside of your lungs and breathing the very breath of God in your life. I think some of us just want to be in the presence of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit says, yeah, but I want to live inside of you. I don't want to just be around you. I want to get inside of you because something happens when the Spirit of God gets inside of us. It changes us and it shapes us and it molds us and it leads us and it guides us in ways that it never has before. Yeah, the presence is great, but when the Spirit of God gets inside of you, it changes everything about your life. And Jesus says, you're going to go, and he won't just be around you any longer. He's going to live inside of you. As the Holy Spirit begins to live inside of us, there are some things or some attributes about him that we need to be aware of. And there are things that he does in our lives. First, he is an equipper. The Holy Spirit equips us with spiritual gifts to use in the church to serve one another. And the Holy Spirit also produces the fruit of the Spirit like love and joy and peace and patience, just to name a few. He equips us as he lives inside of us. Then he is our comforter. When you're sad, when you are afraid, or when you're lonely, the Holy Spirit comforts you. He brings calm to your heart. Even when everybody else around you is spazzing out over something, he is bringing comfort into your heart. Many of you have experienced that in your own life. You've lost a loved one. You've lost a job. You have faced a tragedy. But yet the Holy Spirit brought comfort into your life. He is a strengthener. When you feel overwhelmed or feel exhausted, you don't know if you have what it takes to save your marriage. Do I really want to fight this fight? You don't know what it, if you have what it takes to overcome that temptation. It is the Holy Spirit living inside of you who will give you a supernatural strength to keep moving forward. He is a strengthener. You look at some people and say, I don't know how they did it. I know how they did it. The Holy Spirit inside of them gave them the strength they needed to keep moving forward and going on. Then he's a helper. As a follower of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit helps you accomplish the task that God has given you. He helps you fulfill your purpose for your life. And then he is an advocate. This is a legal term which refers to someone who speaks on behalf of someone else. The Holy Spirit prays to God for us when we cannot pray for ourselves. He's our advocate. He talks to God for us. Then he is a counselor. The Holy Spirit gives us Wisdom to make godly decisions by showing us what is true and what is good and what is right. But this is the last attribute I want to focus on today as we talk about the Holy Spirit. He is our guide. As believers, the Holy Spirit helps to navigate us through life and he points us to the right path. In fact, our verse talks about this attribute in Galatians 5, 25. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Paul tells us in this verse that if you're a Christian, don't just follow the Holy Spirit's leading in a part of your life or a portion of your life, but follow his leading in every part of your life. Not just in your relationships, just not in your finances, just not in your career or your education. Don't just follow the Spirit leading in those areas, but follow him in every area of your life. Follow him. And let him lead you and let him guide you. And so as we begin to look at how the Holy Spirit guides us and directs us, 
and make the best decision for our lives, it's important to realize that as a follower of Jesus Christ, you can miss the Holy Spirit's direction for your life. You can miss it. Just because you're a believer, even if the Holy Spirit is living inside of us, the pneuma of God is in our lungs and we're breathing his breath, we can still miss God's direction for our lives. In the world of audio technology, there's something called hypersonic sound. And with this technology, hypersonic sound, they have engineered sound waves that will travel like a precisely focused laser beam for over 150 yards. Hypersonic sound. Think of a laser beam going out precise. And what they have discovered is a person standing in the correct spot can hear that hypersonic sound coming at them. It's like a laser beam. But if they take one step to the right or to the left, they can't hear anything, even though the sound wave is coming at them, just like it was. If they step back, they hear it again. If they step this way, they don't hear anything. It is a laser beam focused wave of sound that is hitting them. Well, I would say that to tell you this morning that the Holy Spirit is clear and precise. But if you move away from the pathway of the Spirit's voice, you will become unaware of what God is trying to say to you, and you may miss it completely. That's why it's so important. And I don't want you to miss out on what the Holy Spirit might be saying to you and how God might be directing your life. Some of you need direction for a career decision you're about to make. But instead of standing right in front of the Holy Spirit to receive his message, you've stepped off to the right or to the left. You're looking at other places and other people for answers, and you moved out of the Holy Spirit's way, and you can't hear what he's saying about your career. Some of you need his voice and his direction for a relationship decision or a health decision or a decision about the child. But right now, you're not in the place where you can hear the Holy Spirit, and you may be in the process of making a bad decision. Why? Because I have moved myself out of his way, and I can't hear what he's saying to me. I just stepped a little bit off track, a little bit off of the path I need to be on, and I can't hear what the Holy Spirit is trying to say to me. And all the while, the Holy Spirit may be shouting at you, stop, stop, stop. You ever yell at your kids that way, your grandkids that way? Stop, stop, stop. But you can't hear because you're out of the way of the Spirit and you're making your own decisions and your own choices and you're going to do whatever you want to do because you think it's right versus what the Holy Spirit is trying to laser beam right at you and tell you this is what you need to do with your life. And because we step out of that way and we move away from the Spirit's voice, many times we miss out on what God wants us to do with our lives and how he wants us to live our lives. So I want to give you several ways this morning that the Holy Spirit directs our lives. Here's the first way. The Holy Spirit draws me to God. He draws me to God. Paul writes in Ephesians 1, and now you Gentiles have also heard the truth. It just means non-Jewish people have heard the truth. The good news that God saves you, and when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own, giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us an inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. What's Paul saying? The Holy Spirit in your life is God's guarantee that you belong to him. I don't know about you, but I, I like that guarantee. I belong to God. I like that. That's a guarantee that never wear out. That's a guarantee that never goes out of date. 
It's not three years or 36,000 miles. It's not 100,000 miles on your powertrain, right? Yeah, it's not that kind of warranty. It's not the warranty that expired on your refrigerator or your stove last week or your microwave or whatever it was. That's not the kind of warranty. Paul says that when you receive Christ, he gives you the Holy Spirit and he guarantees that you are his and you belong to him. I belong to Jesus Christ. And because of the Holy Spirit's guarantee, there is nothing in this world that can ever separate me from the love of God. Paul affirms this when he writes in Romans 8, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor neither angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Aren't you glad for that today? Nothing can separate me in this world or out of this world from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why is that? Because the Holy Spirit draws us to God and he guarantees that you are my child and nothing can separate us. Nothing. Nothing can make me stop loving you, God says. The only thing that can separate us from God is us. The only thing that can break that relationship is us. The only thing that can put distance between me and God is me. Nothing else can do that. Nothing can separate me from God's love because the Holy Spirit draws me to God, but he also keeps me close to God so that nothing can separate me from his love and knock me off of his path for my life. The second way the Holy Spirit directs me is he reveals God's truth when I engage the Bible. I wish I had a nickel for every time I talked about being engaged in the Bible over the years. But the Bible, the Word of God, is the primary way that we receive God's truth. It is His primary way. We have to engage the Bible. We believe that the Bible is the infallible, inerrant Word of God. That's what we believe and we teach here in this church. And we believe it shows us what is true and what is right. And the Holy Spirit will never direct you in any way that is contrary to the Word of God. Now, we talked a little bit about this on Wednesday night in our Bible study. But if someone were to prophesy over you and say, do this, but it's contrary to the Word of God, you take that prophecy and just ball it up and throw it in the trash because it is not of God. It's not of God. And the Holy Spirit will never lead you in a way that is contrary to the Word of God or removes you from God. The Holy Spirit always pushes you toward God and toward His presence and toward His Word. I've had people tell me all kinds of things that contradict the Bible. I've had them tell me that God told them to leave their spouse and to end their marriage and to run off with this other person. God didn't tell you that. That's not of God. That is contrary to God's word. Nothing about that is of God. I think people tell me that I made a commitment in my business, but I don't know if I want to follow through on that commitment. And I think the Bible says it's okay to go back on my word because it's going to benefit me to do that. God didn't tell you to go back on your word, to break your promise or to break what you said you were going to do. Anything that is contrary to the word of God is not from the Holy Spirit. He will never tell you anything that goes against what God has written in his word for us. And that is why it is so important to engage the Bible on a regular basis. So the Holy Spirit can help you discern what is and what is not God's will for your life. You know why so many Christians get in trouble? They don't have a clue what this book says. They don't have a clue what it's talking about. 
They couldn't take you to one scripture to try to support their decision-making process because they never crack it open. They never look at it, they never read it, never listen to it. Why? Because they never engage the Word of God. But this is where God tells me it's truth. It's where I learn about God and know what he wants me to do. And I, I hear the voice of God as I read his word. You've got to engage it. You know, when you read the Bible, the Holy Spirit uses what you have read to give you direction for what you're facing in life. It's like taking a, a test or an exam in school. And you haven't studied a bit for that thing. You knew it was coming. You knew there was going to be a test at the end of this semester or end of this month. Well, you'd be kind of foolish to pray, and well, God, I'm a Christian, and I didn't study, but give me all the answers to this test, God. I didn't crack one textbook open. I didn't look at one note, but God, give me the answers. We all used to quote that old scripture. God, bring back to my remembrance the things I have studied. Well, some of us hadn't studied a thing. There ain't nothing to bring back to remembrance. That's why we got such bad grades, and some of us got bad grades in school. We didn't study anything. And so the Holy Spirit cannot bring anything to your mind or to your remembrance if you have not opened the Word of God and began to allow it to saturate your mind. But when you do engage the Word of God, now the Holy Spirit can begin to move in your life and remind you, oh yeah, I read a scripture about this, or I read a passage on that, or I remember something in the Bible that says this. Why? Because the Word of God is now in my mind, and it can bring it to the front of my mind. But I've got to engage the Word of God. Look at what John 14 says. But when the Father sends the advocate... As my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. That last phrase is so important. It will remind you of everything I have told you. Where do I find what the Lord has told me? Where do I find it? I find it in his word. He can't remind me if I haven't been in the word. He can't remind me if I haven't been engaging this book. He cannot remind me of that passage that I read because I haven't read it. He can't remind me of that story I read about in the Old Testament because I haven't read that story. But if you will engage the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will come and he will remind you of the things that you've read and bring them to the front of your memory to give you direction in your life for the path that he wants you to be on. You need to, now again, I'll say this, uh, some people say I beat the dead horse to death. You need to spend time every day in the word of God. Every day. So the Holy Spirit can help you through the word as God is speaking to you. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit convicts me of my sin. That simply means that the Holy Spirit reveals certain areas of my life and challenges me to agree that it is sin and then change the direction that I'm going in and then to begin to realign my life with God. That's all that means. I'm convicted of my sin. This is a part of my life where there is sin. Now I have to agree that it is because I don't believe it's sin. I don't agree with it. I don't have to repent of it. But if I agree that it is sinful based on the Holy Spirit's conviction, I will ask God to forgive me, change my direction, and then begin to realign my life with God. Jesus explains it this way. John does in John 16. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Jesus says, I've got to go away from you. Because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. That's why I'm leaving. The world's got to be convicted of its sin. The world has to believe there's a coming judgment. The world's got to believe that God is going to send me back again, but I've got to go away before all this can transpire. We've heard it said that God loves us, but God hates sin. And I believe there's a lot of truth in that statement. But as a children of God, when we step outside of God's will for our life, the Holy Spirit will speak strongly to us and tell us to stop 
the direction we're going in, to turn around and to go back to God. We call that conviction. Holy Spirit begins to speak to me and says, stop what you're doing. Turn around and go back to God. I wonder if you've ever felt that feeling before. It is a very uncomfortable feeling when the Holy Spirit says, stop, turn around, and go back to God. It's a very uncomfortable feeling, but it's conviction. And once you become aware of that sin and you feel the Holy Spirit's conviction, it is that strong pull from the Spirit of God that begins to pull at you and helps you look at yourself and say that I'm not the man or I'm not the woman that I need to be right now. If you're tempted to lie or cheat or steal, the Holy Spirit will convict you of that sin and direct you in the right way to go with God. How many believe lying is still wrong? Anybody believe that still? Well, the Bible says it is. Cheating is still wrong. Stealing is still wrong. Because the Bible teaches us we shouldn't do those things. And if you're doing any of those things or a million other things I haven't mentioned today, the Holy Spirit is going to convict you of that and he will say, stop, turn around, and just go back to God. It's not complicated. It's not rocket science. It's not sonic sound waves. It's none of that stuff. It's just stop, turn around, go back to God. That's all conviction is, is what the Holy Spirit wants us to do in our lives. But here's the thing. You can't ignore the voice of the Holy Spirit if you choose to. You can ignore his voice. You don't have to stop and turn around and go back to God. That's a choice you make and I make. It's a decision that we make. It's called free will. Somebody said that grace is God giving us free will. He doesn't make us mindless robots and, and direct us to everything he wants us to do, make us do it. He gives us a choice. But you can ignore the voice of the Holy Spirit, and but if you do it long enough, eventually you will not be able to hear God's voice at all about anything. It's like that hypersonic laser. If I step away long enough, I'll just keep missing the voice of the Holy Spirit. And I'll just ignore it. And sooner or later, I won't hear him about anything. I'll just make my choices and my decisions and do whatever I want to do because I can't hear his voice in my life. But there are some of us here today, perhaps, and even watching, that know that there's an area of our life that is out of alignment with God. You know it's out of alignment with God. The Holy Spirit has shown you that it is out of alignment. He has told you that it is wrong, but you have ignored him. But hear me today, church, if you ignore him long enough, you will not hear the voice of God about anything. So the Holy Spirit isn't convicting you so that you feel guilty or so that you don't have any fun in life. He convicts you so that you'll repent of your sin, get back on track with God, and continue to receive his direction. That's what he wants to do. Get you back in line with God so you can get his direction for your life. The fourth thing he does it's the Holy Spirit guides my prayers. Have you ever started to pray but didn't have a clue what to pray or how to pray, what to pray for? Or have you ever been so overwhelmed in life by sickness or troubles or worries or stress or whatever it is going on that you aren't even sure the right words to say in that prayer? Well, the good news for all of us is we don't have to worry about that because the Holy Spirit guides our prayers. We don't have to worry about that. Look at Romans 8 again. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, Paul says, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Listen, when you're not sure what to pray for or don't have the words to pray, Paul says the Holy Spirit already knows the desires of your heart. He knows. He knows your desires. He knows your hurt. He knows your anxiety. He knows your fear. And when you don't know what to pray or how to pray, he already knows how to pray for you because he knows everything about you. He knows what's going on in your life. And here's the 
something maybe even greater. He knows God's will for your life as well. And the Holy Spirit prays for you. I, I hope you can wrap your mind around that today. The Holy Spirit prays for you. When you don't know how to pray, when you don't have any words to pray. And I love that. I think the King James says moanings and groanings. I think that's the King James version of this scripture. Moanings and groanings. And that's when you get down to pray or sit in your chair or lay on the floor, however you are at that moment, and you don't know what to say, but all you can do is moan and groan before God. And I don't know if you've ever been there before where you didn't know what to say. You had no words to say. You were so desperate. You were so hurt. You were so lonely. You were so devastated. All you could do was cry and moan and groan before God. And yet the Holy Spirit was right there praying for you, talking to God for you. You didn't say a word in English, but he translated everything you said and moaned and groaned, and he told it right to the Father for you. Wow, what an advocate we have. What a helper we have. What a joy it is to have the Holy Spirit living inside of our lives. But he also says this, that he prays for us in harmony with God's best for your life. What does that mean? It means that my prayer doesn't have to be a perfect prayer. Just pray. Just pray. You know how many people told me over the years, I don't know how to pray. Well, just pray. Just talk to God. You can't do it wrong. There's no right or wrong way to pray. You're just talking to God. And you talk to God, even though you may not be a perfect prayer in your mind. But what happens is the Holy Spirit just fills in all the gaps for me. He's filling in the gaps of my prayers. When you pray like this, and the Holy Spirit prays for you, when you can't pray for yourself, something amazing happens. God's desires now become your desires. And God's will now becomes your will. Because the Holy Spirit is talking to the Father for me when I can't talk for myself. And now it's not just my desires, it's God's desires, and it's God's will for my life. And I hope you get this today. When you pray, it doesn't change God. When you pray, the Holy Spirit changes you by aligning your desires and your will with God's will and God's desires. Don't pray trying to change God. So I know, say, God, change me in this prayer. Change my life and change my desires and change my will. Change me, God. I'm not trying to change you. Some of us have made so many bargains with God, we can't keep up with them. We've made deal after deal after deal. God, if you do, then I'll do. And God, if you help, then I'll do. And God, if you provide, then I'll do. I'm not trying to change God's mind about anything. I just want to get in alignment with God. I want to get in front of that laser beam of the Holy Spirit and hear what he has to say to me. I can change myself and do what God wants me to do. The fifth way he guides me is he speaks to me through my church. This is one of the reasons I do not like to miss church on Sunday mornings. In fact, I miss very few Sunday mornings unless I'm sick or if I'm on a vacation once a year. I miss very little church because I don't want to miss what the Holy Spirit might want to say to me. I don't know if you've ever been in church and this church or any other church or maybe watched the service online and it felt like the, the pastor or the speaker was talking directly to you. It's like you were in front of the laser beam that day and he speak, everything he said was right at you. Boom, boom, boom. Just hit everything that's going on in your life. I've had people come up to me and tell me in my ministry, who told you what was going on in my life? I told them in confidence. I need to know who said that to you. Well, I, nobody told me anything. I had a lady call me a liar one time because she didn't believe that somebody didn't tell me what was going on in her life. She didn't believe the Holy Spirit could use me to speak right to her. She didn't believe that. But we've all had that experience if we've been in church for any length of time. It's like, man, that person spoke right to me. I get emails and text messages from people saying, you spoke right into my heart, right into my life. The truth is, if I'm the one speaking, it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit using our church to speak directly to that person. It's the Holy Spirit doing that. Or maybe you had a really hard week, 
and the worship team sings a song, and suddenly as they sing that song, you are overcome with emotion as they sing that song. What is that? That's the Holy Spirit reminding you that he loves you and he cares about you and he knew what you needed the most that day. Just reminding you that. Look at Hebrews 10, 25. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. If you do not make church attendance a priority, you will miss out on a lot and a large portion of God's direction for your life if it's not a priority. It's like that hypersonic speaker I keep talking about. God is speaking to you, but you're not in the right place to receive that. You're not there to receive it when he's speaking to you. Now, I know we all have to miss church and things come up and we have plans. and We're not saying don't ever not go to church or never go on vacation. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying make church a priority in your life as much as possible. Because when you're not in the house of God with his people, you're going to miss out on something that God wants you to hear that day. You're going to miss it. You, 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 you miss some church services and people come up and say later, boy, you should have been there today. It was a good one. Oh, you missed it. And yeah, it's like, ah, that's the one I had to miss. Should have been there, right? You missed a good church. You missed it. And then you asked them what the pastor preached about, and they couldn't tell you a word the pastor said. But it was a good service, Then you missed it. Let me just say that if you are a parent, you have an extra obligation to your children. You make decisions for your children on what they will and will not do. Because you don't let them make those kind of decisions for themselves. In an article entitled, How Skipping Church Affects Our Children, Carl Truman wrote the following. The church is losing its young people because the parents never taught their children that it was important. I think that applies across the board. It applies to family worship. It also applies to whether you are in church every Sunday and what priority you demonstrate to your children church has on a Sunday. If the sun shines out and their friends are going to the beach, do you decide to skip church and go to the beach? In which case, you send signals to your children that it, church, is not important. He concludes, maybe the reason why our children have no love for Christ is due to the fact that we as parents do not show any love or passion for Christ. Evidence by how we prioritize our time both on Sundays and during the week. When television, sports, school, hobbies are elevated to a place of idolatry and replace the vital Christian responsibilities, then we tell our children that Christ is secondary to all these things. We tell our children that it is not necessary to take up your cross and die daily in order to follow Christ. We tell them that you only have to live for Christ when it's convenient for you. Parents, you have a tremendous responsibility for your children. That does not mean that when they are older, they will serve God. But they will always remember what you've placed inside of them. The scripture says when they're old, it will not depart from them. That means they're always going to serve God. But you need to put your kids in a position where they can hear what God is saying to them. Just like that laser beam sound wave. If you have teenagers, they need to be in youth church on Sundays and Wednesdays, if at all possible, to hear what God is speaking through Pastor Robin into their lives. If you've got children, they need to be in kids' church to hear, what is God speaking into my young life? Listen, God can speak into the life of a toddler or a preschooler or an elementary school student just like he can our lives. But if we don't put them there in that position, they will miss what God is saying to them. What a tremendous responsibility you have, parents. The day in which we're living, you have an even greater responsibility. Our kids are bombarded by things that you and I never imagined in our lifetimes. Yeah, we knew what bullying was. We didn't know what cyberbullying was. That's a whole other level. We didn't know what that was like. We didn't know that somebody could put something on a tweet or Instagram or whatever else and can make a young lady 15 years old 
The pastor told me this week, his 15-year-old granddaughter, because of something on social media was said about her, took an entire bottle of Drano and drank it this past week. She's now lying in a hospital in Kentucky. Her insides eat up of Drano. They don't think she will make it, and she does make it. Her life will be forever altered physically because somebody posted something derogatory about her. So we live in a different world and a different age, and we need to do everything in our power to support our children and our young people, to let them know this church loves them, this church cares about them. We want to do everything we can to help them hear the voice of God and to live out God's will for their lives. But we've got to put them in a place where they can hear what God is saying to them and give them every opportunity to hear the voice of God. The Holy Spirit helps us, and he uses our church to speak to people. He also uses other believers to help me discern God's will. God can use another believer that is Holy Spirit filled to help direct and give you direction for your life when they see something that may be missing. John 16, 13 says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. One of the ways the Holy Spirit guides us and directs us into all truth is through other believers. And let me say that you should have some non-Christian friends in your life. Everybody in your life doesn't have to be a Christian. You should have some non-Christian friends, but you ought to have some Christian friends as well. But for those non-Christian friends that you have, you should love them, you should invite them to church, and you should share your faith with them. But never, never let their voice be the primary direction of your life. And why is that? Because they don't have the Holy Spirit inside of them. It's okay to have non-Christian friends. It's okay to talk to them about what's going on in life. It's okay to share with them. But they're never going to be my primary voice that I listen to. I'm going to listen to somebody who's filled with the Holy Spirit, who's hearing from God so they can speak into my life because God might use that very person to tell me exactly what I need to do in my life and speak direction to me. As much as they care about you as a friend, as much as they may love you, their direction will often contradict the wisdom of the Holy Spirit and get you off track with God. And so we've been praying about this and talking about this. How can we help others stay on track? And how can we help other believers live life, and go through life, and find the path that God wants you to go through in your life? I want to share something with you this morning. If you will bear with me just for a second. We've been praying about beginning life groups here at Harvest Ministry. Something we do not currently have is life groups. A life group is a group of people, maybe 12 to 15, maybe smaller, maybe larger in some settings, that will gather as a group leader's home or some other destination, either weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. They may have food. They may do some type of Bible study. They have fellowship and prayer of wanting to get together with other believers and help live out the kingdom goals and also encourage each other as we go through life. We want to be more like Jesus. I don't know about you, but I want to be more like Jesus. But if I want to be more like Jesus, I got to put myself in situations to become more like Jesus. Got to, got to plug in where he is and where his people are. Got to get involved in it. And so what I'm asking you this morning, I know this is quick notice, and you don't have to make a decision today, but some of you can. If you would like to be a life group leader, if you say, you know what? I would like to take a group of people and lead them and go through life together with them. Maybe for 10 or 12 weeks. And the possibilities are endless on what kind of group you can have. We've listed some of the ways on the screen. It could be a new believers group. It could be a seniors, professionals, Bible study, men, women, hiking, book club, young marriage, old marriage, a walking group, a singles group, a biking group, a prayer group, a parenting group, an exercise group, a homeschooling group, a cooking group, an arts group, 
and the list is un, unlimited on what it could be. But you're just doing life together. You find people who have things in common. You say, you know what? Let's get together and let's do life together for a, a few weeks. Let's just help each other. It's just endless what you could do as a group leader. Something that you would like to do, we're going to do some training on November the 28th and December the 12th. My wife and I are going to be the life group leader of the life group leaders. That's what we're going to do. We're going to be the leader of the leaders. We signed up for that. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you some tools and give you some ideas and, and help you get through this. But if you say, Pastor, that sounds like something I may like to do. Something you've never done is out of your comfort zone. It's going to stretch you so far, you don't know what you can do. You don't know if you're going to have time to do it. Listen, you take a step of faith, God will give you the time, and he'll give you the energy, and he'll give you the wisdom, he'll give you the knowledge to do this. As you leave this morning, as you pass that back table and sign up for Fall Festival next week to help us work, go out these doors, down that hallway where the kids check in, used to be for kids ministries. There's a table set up down there. Just write your name and phone number down. That's all you have to do. Just write your name and phone number down. And say, Pastor, I'd be interested in leading a group. But if it's something you're passionate about, there's probably somebody else in this church that's passionate about it also. And we want you to pull them in. But it's not just inward focused. We want you to pull other people in. We want you to pull your friends and your coworkers and your family members in and say, you know what? I'd like to be a part of a group like that that'll help me through life, that'll help me as I struggle. Maybe you're a widow, maybe you're a widower, maybe you've lost a child. Maybe you could start that group here in this church for a few weeks to minister to those people. I said all that, and I hope you will sign up today and prayerfully consider it and sign up next week. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful whose voice you listen to in life. As a believer, you need to have other believers speaking into your life. Finally, I just want to tell you, the Holy Spirit calls me to faith in Jesus. I began today talking about how the Holy Spirit draws people to God. And at some point, if he hasn't already done so, he is going to call you to faith in Jesus Christ as well. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how hard your heart is right now, God created you, God loves you, and God wants to have a relationship with you. And if you have not done so, he wants you to receive his gift of salvation and put your faith in Jesus Christ. And when you do that, he will exchange your sins for his salvation and his eternal life. Notice this last verse in Galatians 3 today. Paul says, let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Did you receive the Holy Spirit by being a good person or because your parents are Christians or because you went to church when you were younger? He says, of course not. You received the Spirit because you believed the message you heard about Christ. You believe the message. If you've never believed that Jesus died for your sins on the cross and committed to follow him as your Lord and Savior, you can do that today when we pray in just a moment. Or maybe the Holy Spirit's been tugging at your heart and you've been ignoring him and putting him off. Maybe he's already convicted you of something that you know is not in alignment with God's will for your life. You know it is not what God wants you to do. It's not how God wants you to live, but you have been ignoring it and you have stepped out of the way of his voice. And it's getting easier and easier not to hear what the Holy Spirit says because you stepped away from him for so long. He's calling you back today. He wants you to have a life here, but he wants you to have an eternal life with the Father forever in heaven. He wants you to enjoy your life here, but he wants you to have a life more abundantly in a home in heaven. But we have to open up our hearts and our ears to hear what he says to us. We ask Austin, he'll begin to play something this morning. And just where you're at, would you bow your heads with me today? I know us in the Pentecostal tradition, we we talk about the Holy Spirit, we tend to think we're going to have a rip-roaring message about it, but I just want to give you some practical things today about who the Holy 
Holy Spirit is and how the Holy Spirit helps us live life. Some of you need him to equip you in life. Some of you today need to be comforted. We received a call today before we came to church from one of our church members, Peggy Speed, her daughter, passed away this morning. She needs comfort right now as she deals with that. Others of you need comfort for other reasons in other situations. Some of you need a strength today to make it through. Some of you need him to be your helper, your advocate. You don't know what to pray and how to pray, but you need him to pray for you today. Some of you need him as a counselor. Others of you need him to be your guide today, to guide you through whatever's going on in your life at this moment. He is here to help you. You just have to receive it. He wants to be the pneuma. He wants to be the breath of God inside of your lungs, helping you. But you got to place yourself in a position to receive what he's speaking to you here this morning you say Pastor Atkins I need the Holy Spirit to guide me right now in my life to help me make some decisions to make some choices to help me with some things I'm facing would you just slip up your hand this morning I'm not going to call you out I promise you thank you I just need his help today just need his help it's okay he, he knows you need his help he knows everything about you. He knows your desires. Father, now, I feel such a strong impression to pray for those who raised their hands. There are people of all ages in this audience, people of all ages watching us online. We're facing so many different situations. As I mentioned, some have lost loved ones. Even today, they've lost loved ones. Some are facing a physical situation. They're not sure what to do with it. Somebody listening, Lord, is facing a financial need, and they just feel the weight of that financial burden just crushing them down today. Somebody listening, Lord, perhaps is thinking about walking away from their spouse leaving their children saying I want to start over there's someone maybe even Lord is trying to decide which church they need to be a part of where they need to be planted at where they need to grow whatever it is Holy Spirit guide us today I pray for that one who's considering becoming a, a life group leader. He said, I'll step up and I'll, I want to speak life into other people. I want to help guide them through what's going on in their life and help them. Speak to our hearts today, Lord. Speak, Holy Spirit. Father, let us know that we're never alone, that we're never without you. We're never by ourselves. Whatever we need at any moment, you're here to help us with that. You're here to guide us, give us direction. Help us to put ourselves in a position to hear your voice, to stand right in front of you, Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, to put ourselves in position with our families and our, our children, to let them hear the voice of God for themselves. In a world that is full of other voices, in a world that is full of voices that are anti-God and anti-Christ and anti-Christian and anti-church. God, let us love our children and love our families and place them in a very position where they can hear the voice of God for themselves. Lord, we'll not let our children be lost. We'll not let them, the devil take over in their lives. We'll not, Lord, let's let you say that to them that they are not a priority. We will not say that everything else is more important in life than church and Jesus and being here. We will not do that with our children, with our grandchildren. Help us, Lord, to wake up to the times around us. 
Help us, Holy Spirit, to see with your eyes the days in which we're living in. Dark days, evil days, wicked days. We need you now more than we've ever needed you, Holy Spirit. Be the breath of God in our lives. Breathe on us fresh today. Breathe on us fresh today, I pray. In Jesus' name. Can we say amen together as a church? Do we agree and we receive it today? Also, just keep playing your song. Before you go, let me tell you about our offering today. This for our Harvest Partner. Hi, this is Pastor Milton Atkins at the Harvest Ministries Church. Thank you so much for joining our broadcast today. I wanted to take just a moment to invite you to become a financial partner with us as we try to pay off the indebtedness on our building and on our property. We believe the Lord has called us to a great mission here in the Roanoke Valley and also around the world, and we would love to have you be a part of that with us. Now, whether that means you give $20 a month, $50 a month, or whatever the Lord may lay on your heart to give, every dollar you give will go directly to our building fund to pay down this indebtedness. So thank you for considering that today. At the bottom of your screen, there are some ways you can give, and we pray God's richest blessings upon you. I'm hearing testimony after testimony. People saying that declaration is coming to pass in my life. So we're going to declare this today as we give our offering and give our tithes. Are you ready? As we give today's tithes and offering, we are believing for a supernatural release of God's favor over every area of our lives. Jobs and better jobs. Checks in the mail, inheritances, secure investments, scholarships, creative ideas, healing for our body, soul, and spirit, deliverance to the captive, salvation to the lost, and an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now say it like you mean it. We are blessed, and we will be a blessing to others in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you blessed today? I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. Wherever I go, I am blessed because God is there. Now receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day and a great week serving the Lord.